Okay, 701, 706. <clears throat> Let's get ready. Um, first one. We have a lot of things going on here, so we're going to multiply, we're going to divide, and we're going to subtract. So let's start changing what we can. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 5 is 12, so you get negative 12 over 7, times 3 over 4. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to divide that by 3 times 2 is 6, times 1 is 7 over 3. So I'm just changing everything to fractions, and 0 0.3 as a fraction is 3 over 10. Let's take care of these two first. Um, I can simplify 4 divided by 4 is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and I can multiply, so I'm just taking, taking care of this. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, 7 times 1 at the bottom is 7, and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, right? So multiply by 3 over 7, and then subtract 3 over 10. So let's take care of these two now. It's a negative times a positive, so I get negative 27 over 7, and minus 3 over 10. Um, we have to find an LCM. Why do I feel like there's did I do something wrong? Four, three, nine. No, it looks okay. Oh, because seven times seven in the real world is forty-nine. So let's find the LCM. So it's going to be negative something, and the LCM between forty-nine and ten is going to be four hundred and ninety. Four hundred and ninety. So 449 to 490 times 10, so I'm going to multiply 27 times 10, I'm going to get 270. 10 times 49 is going to give me 49, so times 49, so therefore times 49 on top. Uh, that's going to be 144, I think, 147. 3 times 9 is 27, carry 2, 147. So now we have this a subtraction here. So <coughs> minus 270, and I change that to an addition problem, plus negative 147 over 490. Right, so two negatives being added together, so it's going to be just a negative number, right? So 490 stays the same. So a negative and negative, so we're just going to add those two numbers, so 270 and 147. 7, 11, 417. Okay. <clears throat> so, over here, let me try a different way to show you. So I need to find two exact same numbers that added to 32.5 will give me 84.2. And in this case, what we can do is find the difference between 84.2 and 32.5. If I subtract these two, let me borrow from the 4. You get 3, 12, 7, 1, and 51.7. So, I know that I can write this like this, plus x plus x, and I know that these two have to be negative 1.7, because if I add negative 51, sorry, negative 51.7 plus 32.5, I get 84.2. So, because I know these two have the same value, all I have to do is to divide 51.7 divided by 2, and I'll know the value of each of my variables, which they're both equal. So 51.7 divided by 2, I get 2, 4, 5, 10, put a decimal over here, 17, 8 goes 17, 8 times, which is 16, 1 left over, bring a 0 down, it's going to be 5. So negative, by the way. Um, so it's going to be negative 32.5 plus negative 25.85 plus negative 25.85, right? So all these three numbers added together gives me negative 84.2. So that is one way you can do it. Let's do this one because it's a little bit easier than that. So 9 over 20, I'm going to divide that by 15 over 100, right? Because the 5 is in the hundreds place. So we can change that quickly to a fraction. Uh, 9 over 20 times 100 over 15. We can simplify. 
uh, 20 goes into 20 one time, 20 goes into 100 five times, 5 goes into 5 one time, 15 goes into 5 three times, 3 goes into 3 one time, and 9 goes into 3 two times. So I'm going to be left with 3. Did I do this correctly? Um, yeah, it looks like it's 3, because 3 times 1 is 3 on the top, and 1 times 1 is 1, so I just get a 3. Now, oh. okay, so that was nice. Um, here I have to subtract the two fractions in the numerator and then divide, so let's start changing things. Okay, so 8 times 1 is 8 plus 3 is 11, so I get negative 11 over 8, which I'm going to minus 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11, 11 over 5, right? And I, get, I have to do that first and then divide by 0 0.2, which is the same thing as 2 over 10. So let's subtract that. So LCM is 40. Don't forget the minus sign. Minus 40 over here. 8 times 5, so the top is 55. 5 times 8 is 40, so the top is 88. And then divide this whole thing by 2 over 10. Um, over here, I'm going to get something over 40, right? So if you imagine that, your numerators look like this. If I change that to an addition problem, I'm going to get something like this, right? And two negatives here, it's going to be more negatives, 55 and 88. Let's add it up. 3 goes 1, 6, 143. So I'm going to get 143 divided by 2 tenths, which I'm going to change the multiplication, and I'm going to get 10 over 2. I can simplify for sure. 10 goes to 10 once, 10 goes into 44 times. Is there anything else I can simplify? No. Negative times a positive is going to be a negative. 143 times 1 is 143. And 4 times 2 is 8. Now, if I change that to a mixed number, ooh, let me just divide over here. So if I were to change that to a mixed number, I get 143 divided by 8. Goes into 1, no, goes into 14 one time. 6 left over, bring the 3 down. 8 goes into 63 7 times, which is 56, yeah. 56. And I'm going to have 7 left over. So, so let's stop here. So 8 goes into 143 17 times. 7 left over, over 8, and all that is negative. So that's my answer as a mixed number. <laughs> Let's do, don't matter, let's do this one. So this is a decimal times a decimal times a whole number. Let's take care of these two. It's a positive times a negative, so I get a negative. Um, let's just multiply that out, 1.2 times 0 0.22. One decimal place here, two decimal places over here, so a total of three decimal places, and that's what my answer should have. So that's going to be two, sorry. 2 times 2 is 4, 2, push 1 over, 2 times 2 again is 4, 2, I can stop, I don't have to do the zeros, I get 4, 6, 2, 3 decimal places would be 1, 2, 3, I put a decimal, and I'm going to add a 0, so that's going to give me negative 0 0.264, which I now have to multiply by times negative 35, so Negative times a negative is a positive, so I know my answer is going to be positive, so I just got to multiply this times 35. 5 and 4 is 20, 32 goes 3, 18, push 1 over, 3 and 4 is 12, goes 1 is 19, and goes 1 is 7, 0, 4, 17, 9. There's 1, 2, 3 decimal places here, and none over here, so my answer should have 1, 2, 3 decimal places, and it's going to give me 9, 7. Four zero. There's a decimal right here. <laughs> Next, I have a division, a subtraction, and then a division. So, um, I'm curious about one thing over here. Give me one second. I do all that. Give me one second. I'm going to pause the video. Well, you're not going to notice, but I'm going to pause it.
Okay, so here is the issue with letter F. Letter F says 3 8 divided by negative 5 6, 5 6 minus 1.5, and then all that divided by 2.4. So if you do it like this, and if you rewrite the problem, divided by negative 5 6 minus 1.5, and then obviously we know that this is a division, right? Divided by 2.4. If you write it like this, you're going to face a problem because according to this line, you're going to do the division first, right? And then <coughs> you're going to have to do this division first, the second, I'm sorry. You're going to have to do this division second, but it's not what the problem is saying. The problem is saying take this whole numerator, okay, divide it, subtract it, and then divide it by 2.4. So we have to be really careful when we write it horizontally. So one thing we can add here is this. To make sure that we do all this first and divide it by 2.4. So remember, we're taking the whole numerator, finding, changing that, all that to one single number and then divide it by 2.4. Okay, so it's okay, like I, you know, like I said in class, to write it horizontally, but we gotta protect the numerator so that it doesn't change the order of operations that we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so let's find, and this represents, this part right here represents our numerator numerator okay so we gotta find that and then divide it by 2.4 so <clears throat> let's do the first part is 3 8 times 6 over 5 negative and we're going to mo subtract that by 15 over 10 All right let's put a little bracket over here and then we're going to divide that by 24 over 10 so over here, I can simplify. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 4 times 5 is 20, right? So I'm done with my parentheses here. And then I'm going to subtract that 15 over 10. And again, keep the brackets until I finish with that. And then divide it by 24 over 10. Find the LCM. The LCM is obviously 20 minus. And then I'm going to change a 10 to a 20. And 10 times 2 becomes 20. 10 times on top is 15 times 2, which is 30. <laughs> Not done yet. Then divide by 24 over 10. So let me take this on the top here, on the side here. So you're going to get, ignore the denominators for a second. You get negative 9 minus 30. If I change that to an addition problem, I get negative 9 plus, right? Subtraction takes to addition. And we're going to take the additive inverse of 30, which is negative 30. Negative 9 plus negative 30 is negative 39. All right, so I get negative 39. So in, in the brackets, I'm going to get something over 20, and it's going to be negative 39 over 20, which I'm now going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 10 over 24. Negative times a positive is a negative, right? So let's do some simplifying here. 10 goes into 10 once. 10 goes into 22 times. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 39 divided by 3 is 13. Now I can finally multiply. So on top, negative 13 times 1 is just that. 2 times 8 up top at the bottom is 16. So it's the final answer is negative 13 over 16. Okay. Um, it's negative 3 over 1. I'm going to divide that by... 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27 over 5, right? So this is what this problem looks like horizontally. Let's change that to multiplication, times 5 over 27. I can simplify a few things. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 27 divided by 3 is 9. A negative times a positive is a negative. 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 9 is 9. Final answer, 5 ninths. <laughs> <clears throat> so here we have negative 3 times the absolute value of this whole thing here, then minus negative 19. So let we got to find what this part is. we got to change that unknown value, right? It's going to become one value. So negative 3, it's going to wait a little bit. So let's find what's inside that absolute value sign. Okay. So we have 2 times negative 3, and that's negative 6, and then minus 15 change it to addition problem, you get negative 6 plus negative 15, 
right? So I can't make zero pairs, so we're going to have a bunch of negatives together, so it's going to be negative 21. So we're going to take the absolute value of negative 21. So it's going to be negative 3 times the absolute value of negative 21, which is just 21, because it's 21 units away from 0, minus negative 19. Negative 3 times 21 is negative 63, minus negative 19. So anytime you have a subtraction sign, and if you want to change it to an addition problem, you can. Negative 63 plus 19. There are more negatives. The absolute value is bigger of a negative, so I'm going to take that sign of negative, and I'm going to find the difference between 63 and 19, right? After you make zero pairs, right? You're going to make one, one positive with one negative. That makes a zero pair. And the positive is another negative, and eventually you'll notice that there's a bunch of negatives left over. So how many leftovers are going to be the difference of these two numbers? 13 minus 9 is 4. That was a 6, which became a 5. So you get negative 44. La. I. Uh, subtraction, then um, what do you call it? Multiplication. Um, 3 sevenths. Minus 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9, 9 over 5, divided by 7 over 10, because I'm going to change it to a fraction. Inside the parentheses, we get 35 as our common denominator. <clears throat> 7 times 5, right, gave you 35, so it's 5 times 5, 5 times 3, which is 15. 5 times 7 gave you 35, so 9 times 7 is 63. So we're going to have something over 35. Let's figure out what that is. So ignore the denominator. So you have on the top 15 minus 63. Or 15 plus negative 63. Again, you're going to make zero pairs, remember? And uh, you're going to have a bunch of negatives left over because there's more negative. So let's find the difference between 16, 63 and 15. 13 minus 5 is 8, 5 minus 1 is 4, so it's going to be negative 48 times, and we're going to use a reciprocal, which is 10 over 7. Can I simplify anything? Yes, I can. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 35 divided by 5 is 7. Um, I think that's it. 7 times 7 at the bottom is 49, and 96 on top, I think. Yes, no, yes, but negative. Okay, if you change that to a mixed number, 49 goes to 46 one time, and then you have a lot left over, 16 minus 9 is 7, 8 minus 4 is 47, over 49, but all that negative. Okay, find the mean is the average, right? So we add all those numbers up and then divide it by however many numbers are in our data. In this case, there's 5, so let's... Write this as a addition sentence, so you get negative 12 plus negative 8 plus 4 plus negative 22 plus 17, and we're going to divide all that by 5. So let me put that in parentheses and divide by 5. Let's add them up first. These two, you get negative 20, right? Negative 12 plus negative 8 plus negative 20. Then let's add to the 4. Let's do that. Plus 4 now. Uh, negative 20 plus 4, they're more negative, so we're going to get negative 16. Right? And then I'm going to add that to plus uh, negative 22. Negative 16 plus negative 22, two negatives added together, so we're just going to have more negatives. And 16 and 22 is 30 something, 8. And finally, I'm going to add negative 38 plus 17. <laughs> I'm going to have more negatives left over I make, uh, after I make all those zero pairs. And my my answer is going to be 21, negative 21, right? So all this inside the bracket becomes negative 21, which I can now divide by 5. So 21 divided by 5, 4, sorry, 4 goes over here. <clears throat> That's a 20. One left over, bring, put it there, add a decimal, put a 0, that becomes a 10. 5 goes into 10 two times. No leftover, so final answer is going to be 4.2, but it has to be negative because a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Okay. <coughs> K, yikes. Okay, let's do K. K has a lot of stuff. So again, all the numerator 
all this in the numerator is going to become one single number, which you're then going to divide by 5 over 6. So, let's do that. So, 1 fifth minus 1 over 7 plus, and then I change that to a fraction, is 305 over 100, right? I'm going to divide that by 5 over 6. So, this is my numerator. So, let me protect my numerator. So, I got to, this is mine right here, numerator. So all this, this whole thing here, is my numerator. So find, evaluate that, and then divide that by 5 or 6. So 1 fifth is going to multiply with whatever number this is inside. 3 over 5 or 100. <clears throat> 3 over, nah. Maybe it's a little too early for this. 305 over 100. Can I simplify that? Yes, I can add it right now. Find the common denominator, which is 700. Or I can make my life a little bit easier. So 305, I don't like to deal with big numbers. So let me divide this by 5. So it's negative 1 over 7. Plus, if I divide 100 by 5, I get 20. If I divide 305 by 5, I get, I have no idea, uh, 61. Yeah, 61. Much better. That, we divide that by 5, 6. So, 1 fifth, this is going to be, let's find the common denominator here. It's between 7 and 20, which is 140. 7 times 20 was 140, so on top it's going to be times 20, which is 20. 20 times 7 gives you 140, so on top times 7, which is going to be 7 times 61 times 7, which is 7, and 7 times 6 is 407, I think. Yeah, 427, sorry. 427. Uh, sorry, close brackets, divide by 5, 6. Um, so, let's continue. So, we have a numerator, which I still haven't simplified to a single number. So inside the brackets, it's going to be something over 140. So I have negative 20 plus 427. So negative 20 plus 427. Obviously, my answer is going to be positive because there's more positives, right? And how many more positives than that? But then 20 do I have? It's going to be the difference between the two. So I'm going to get 407. So that becomes 407, and then I still have to divide by 5 over 6, but I'm still not done with these two guys here. Now, remember, this is a multiplication. Can I simplify anything? No, it doesn't look like it. 1 times 407 is 407. Actually, what I should have done is remove, remove the parentheses. Okay, so once that can be removed, because I don't need them anymore, there's nothing inside the parentheses. So I have 1 fifth times 407 which is 407, 5 times 140, which is 0, 0, 700. I have a feeling I did something wrong. Uh, 5 times 0, 0, 5 times 4 is 20, equals 2, 700. And then divide this, but let's just do this, take a step, and divide that, or times that 6 over 5. Can I simplify this? There's something that doesn't look right. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 700 divided by 2 is 350. Can I simplify anything else? Doesn't look like it. So on the top is 407 times 3, which is 1, 2, 1,221. And at the bottom, 5 times 350 is a 0, 25, 1,750. I think I did something wrong, um, but I don't know where. Uh, well, if you find out, let me know. Bottom, here is, uh, what do you call it? what is, not as, what is the change in elevation per second. So you had an airplane that's flying over here, and it, at 25,000 feet, right? Here's my airplane, it's flying. And then my airplane is going to drop to 8,200 feet. So you know that, actually, the wind should be the other way. So it dropped. Right, so and it dropped that drop occurred in 50 seconds. 
and we want to find out how much it dropped per second. So let's find out what the drop was first of all. So it's 25,000 where it started. It ended up 18,200 feet. If I subtract, I get 0, 0. 10 minus 2 is 8. This was 15, which became a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. And did this borrow? Yeah, it did borrow, so that becomes real. So the airplane dropped 6,800 feet. All right, so to go from this position to this position, it dropped 6,800 feet. So the change was a negative because it dropped. So <clears throat> how much did it drop in one second? So that took 50 seconds. So we get 6,800. We can divide that by 50 seconds. And that should give us our change per second, which is obviously going to be a negative, uh, which so let's divide this. 150, 18, 0, 3, 150, 306. So that gives you negative 136, which if you write it as a sentence, you're going to write that the change per second was a drop, was a drop of 136 feet per second. And that explains our negative sign because obviously the airplane is dropping okay um, la, la. okay so let's take we have four six more problems take the first one again you have to find what's inside the absolute value brackets right and then subtract the 27 so we got to do what's inside first you can't take the absolute value yet minus 27 so order of operation tells us that we have to do the multiplication here multiplication here and then subtract negative 5 times 5 is negative 10 minus and 5 times 8 is 40. absolute value absolute value so negative 10 we can change this to an addition plus negative 40 right and negative 10 plus negative 40 is negative 50. Okay, now i can take the absolute value and absolute value of negative 50 is just 50. And I can finally subtract from about subtract 27, which gives me 23. Uh, let's do the one on the side, which is this one. Um, so again, now I have negative 3, which is going to multiply by the absolute value of whatever is inside. So we've got to find that absolute value first, and then the same thing here. So let's see what we can do. So negative 3. What's negative 8 minus 15? Negative 8 minus 15 is the same thing as negative 8 plus negative 15. Yeah? So it's a negative and a negative, so it's going to be a negative because I'm just adding. In this case, I'm adding, right? Uh, it's going to be negative 23. Minus absolute value of 4 times negative 5, a positive times a negative is negative. And that's giving negative 20. Now I can take the absolute value. I get negative 3 times... 23 because the absolute value of negative 23 is 23 minus absolute value of negative 20 is 20. Multiply these two, I get negative 69 and negative times the positive is negative, so negative minus 20. Change that to addition, negative 69 plus negative 20. Okay, so no zero pairs. I have a bunch of negatives being added together and I get negative 89. This one right here. So we have the absolute value of this to the second power minus 8 minus 5 squared minus 4 squared. So let's take, let's find out what our unknown value here is. So absolute value is of negative 3 to the second power, which is 9. Negative 3 times 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 minus 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. So what's the absolute value of 1? It's just 1, right? So 1, and then let's continue. Minus 5 to the second power is 25. Minus 4 to the second power is 16. So now this is what I have. Now if I change that to us, let's do these two first. 1 and 25. 1 plus negative 25, which is going to give me negative 24, because there's more negatives, right? How many more? 24 more. And I take the sign of the number with the bigger absolute value. And then I'm going to do minus 16. So Negative 24 minus 16 is the same thing as negative 24 plus negative 16. That's going to give me negative 40.
for doing this one. So again, we have a lot of things in that inside the absolute value bracket. So 9.5 plus 12 divided by negative 6 divided by 3 minus 1 to the fourth power. Jeez. All right, so inside these two brackets, I have a choice of addition and division. So you have to do the division first. So 9.5 plus and 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. I put that in parentheses. 9.5 plus negative 2, there's more positive, so I know my answer is positive. So 9.5 plus negative 2 is going to be 7.5, right? And the absolute value of 7.5 is just simply 7.5. That's how many units it's, it is away from 0. So 7.5, now I'm going to do that divided by 3 and minus 1 to the 4th power. And 1 to the 4th power, I can just simply write 1 because it's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Do the division first, not the subtraction. 7.5 divided by 3. So imagine if you add $7.50 and you want to split it up among three friends. Um, each friend would get, this one is simple enough, you get 2.5, $2.50 for everyone, right? Minus 1, and 2.5 minus 1 is just simply 1.5. Is that it? There's more. Eesh, there's two more. Let's continue with, you know, around the absolute value flow here. So let's do this one. 0 0.71 minus 1.2. So again, we can write it. Let me write it like it's 0 0.71 minus, we're going to change that to addition, 1.2. We're going to take the sign of the bigger of the, of the number with the bigger absolute value. So I know my answer is negative because this is the bigger, right? And then find a difference between these two. So 1.2 minus 0 0.71. Placeholder. Borrow, borrow, and borrow. 9, 4. 0.49. So my answer is 0 0.49. I'm going to write 0 0.49 minus 5 times negative 3 to the third power. So what's the absolute value of 0 0.49? It's just simply 0 0.49 minus 5 times, and what, it, let me leave that minus sign outside here waiting, and let's take 3 to the third power, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Finally, I can do everything because all my unknown values I do know. I know what 3 to the third power is. I find that I found out what uh, the absolute value of our mystery number, which was 0 0.49. I have a choice between subtracting and multiplying. So obviously, I'm going to leave the subtracting one and I take care of this part right here. It's 5 times a negative number. So I know it's a positive 5 times a negative number. So it's going to be a negative something. 5 times 27, 35 goes to this, 135, so it's going to be negative 135. 0 0.49 plus, right, if you change that to addition plus, uh, addition sign, plus, and then the opposite of negative 135, which is 135. So this one's easy, 49 cents plus 135 dollars is 135 dollars, and 49 cents. And one last one, and um, let's change this. So it's negative 7 over 15 divided by negative 3 over 8 minus blah, 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 0 0.415. Now, this one, although I mentioned before that, you know, you might want to, because this is the numerator right here. You want to protect it, right? Um, because we have to find that and then subtract by negative 0 0.15 which I'm going to erase and I'm going to write 15 over 100 so that we don't one step ahead all right so although one comment here I did not need this brackets to protect this first part here only because I'm going to do that part anyway, right? Because division counts ahead of, of subtraction. But if you want, it doesn't really hurt. Um, so it's negative 7 over 15 times 8 over 3, right? Negative. Um, simplify anything. 
does it look like? So it's a negative times a negative, which becomes a positive. Five, seven times eight, which is 56, and 15 times three, which is 45. So this is what I have. So that becomes 56 over 45 minus negative 15 over 100. I'm going to make my life a little easier before I subtract. And I'm going to change 15 and 100. I'm going to simplify this fraction. 15 over 100 is the same thing. If I divide that by 5, I get a 3. If I divide 100 by 5, I get a 20. So this is equivalent, right? So 320 is equivalent to 15 over 100. So again, let me write that minus 3 over 20. A little bit more manageable. Find the LCM between 45 and 20 is going to be about, about 180. Negative 180. 45 times 4 is 180, so I'm going to multiply the, the top by 4. 24, 224, I think. And uh, 20 times 9 is 180, so I'm top is going to be 27. So let me erase, because I need a little bit more room. Uh, so I get over here 224 over 180. Change that to an addition problem. It's going to be plus, change it to the opposite of the second one, which is going to be 27 positive over 180. That becomes a very simple. 180 is my denominator, and on top, 224 plus 227 is going to become 251. Change that to a mixed number. 180 goes into 251 one time, and you have 71 left over over 180. And that's that. Okay.